Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to do a little bit more on lighting and rendering, and I'm going to do a quick sketch of this ear. Because as I've been hearing from you guys, a lot of people are having trouble with their work feeling flat. They just don't quite understand why it's not looking realistic in the way they want. And nine times out of ten, the answer is because of lighting. In order to make things look three-dimensional, to have form, they have to be well lit. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So you can see I've started out with my sketch here with a line drawing on the right. And that was drawn with one of the brushes I made in my custom brush design series. The layer is set to multiply. And for the first half, I'm going to be drawing underneath that so I can get the structure blocked in. And for this whole video, I'm only going to be using one brush. Standard, hard round with a bit of texture on it. So it's going to be easy to render with, but it's also going to have a little bit of textural grit to it. There's a lot of different ways to approach rendering like this, but I really like the temp layer approach. So I've got my value swatches here. I'm going to start with the shadows. So on a new layer, I'm going to be painting in from hard to soft. So I'll start on the hard edge, render out the shadow shape, concentrating most on that way the hard edge looks. And then as it transitions into the highlight shape, I'll use a soft eraser to erase that away. And in fact, I'll even put a little texture on my eraser just so it'll add a little extra grittiness. Okay. So I'll make a new layer, start from the hard edge, and paint out towards the soft. And then erase away the area I don't want. And I find that starting with the shadows like this is a great way to anchor a painting in because you could theoretically start with the highlights if you wanted, but there's something about starting with the shadows and then slowly building up to your brightest values that gives it a convincing look. All right, so this is basically the same steps that I'll be repeating over and over. You've seen me do it before, but let's get real for a second. Why am I drawn ears? Why all the grayscale? It seems like this has nothing to do with concept art, nothing to do with dragons, all the fun stuff. But look, this is it. This is how you get better. It may not look fun, but the truth is once you do it a little more, it actually becomes fun. Because all you're doing is looking at light, shadow, and form. You can describe anything visually with form. Adding things like color and texture will be nice, and that's something you get to later. But if you can't get this crucial step, getting the shadows to look correct in order to create sort of a convincing three-dimensional form, well, then you'll never make the rest of the stuff work. This is crucial. If you were to go to art school, they'd force you to go to a couple classes of drawing. Drawing one, drawing two, even if you were a film major. Oops, um, this is an important part. Okay, so now I'm halfway through. I'm going to collapse everything down and start painting on top of my line art because it's all blocked in so I don't have to worry about the structure. Okay, sorry, back to my diatribe. So this stuff, it is so important. Yes, we are using a computer and that means we can break certain rules. Drawing this ear in 10 minutes was a lot quicker than I could have done the same with charcoal. And that's where Photoshop helps. But you're only going to get the long-term results you want if you learn in the traditional way. So even if you can't afford art school, you still should mimic drawing one. In drawing one, you sit down on a wooden desk and draw still lifes every day for hours. It is boring, but you get much better. And the things you get better at are hard to quantify. What you're doing is you're training your eye to see shape, value, and form. That's something that no Photoshop tutorial is going to help you get better at. The only way to get better at it is looking at still lifes. There's a term I've heard used called pencil mileage. And the idea here is just simply sitting down at your desk drawing stuff is going to make you better over time. And I really believe in that. If you feel frustrated that your drawings aren't looking three-dimensional, aren't looking realistic, 
you probably just haven't spent enough hours. Look, if there was an easy way to get better at this stuff, some filter hidden somewhere in the menus, I would have found it by now. It's not there. This is just pure practice. It, now, it's careful practice. Don't get me wrong, when I do studies like these, I am not just phoning it in, serving my time. I am looking carefully and studying the surfaces. But this sort of careful, dedicated practice is really the only way to get the results you want. In fact, I think it's best to do just grayscale. Limit it down to pure form. Because once you understand form, then you're in. You can paint directly in color if you want, but you'll be understanding values as you paint the color in. So I'm not even advocating a grayscale to color workflow. I'm simply advocating learning and internalizing form. And really the only way to do that is lots of practice. So I hope that in some way control paint can stand in as a drawing one for Photoshop. In fact, that's why I created the basic rendering for Photoshop series. It is in some small part like a drawing one course, because what I'm doing here is I'm drawing light and shadow, but based on an understanding of how basic types of light work. And that's what the basic rendering series is all about. I talk about the difference between direct light or indirect light. What's ambient occlusion? Because knowing about light and how to see its effects is really the secret to painting everything. It's how you're going to paint Space Marines, but this has to come first. So get out there and practice your form. Practice your lighting and your value. Of course, I'd encourage you to get the series found in the store, which is exactly about these subjects. But this is an old topic. If you like learning from books better, there's plenty of books on this in the library. Now, however you do it, learn this subject. It is the foundation to everything else you're going to do in painting. That's why you do it first at art school. So good luck, and thanks for watching, guys.